Well, buying a home, it's supposed to be one of the best forms of investment, but now investors are taking a second look at that notion. When you consider things like interest, maintenance, and repairs over time, is the rate of return really worth all that much? And how does real estate stack up against other types of investments? Joining us now is Ed Butowski. He is the managing chap partner of Chapwood Capital Investment Management. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you for having me, Molly. Let's start by uh, talking about the Case-Shiller Housing Price Index. They say the return on, on a home, particularly over the last uh, decade and more, has been about 4%, which doesn't sound bad. But then when you add in inflation, is it really the investment that people think it is? Well, let's put this in perspective. I don't think anybody should ever buy a home or, excuse me, buy a house for anything other than living in it and being your home where you raise your children or be close to your school or to the place that you worship. Uh, I think that is the number one reason that you buy a house. You don't buy it as an investment. One of the unintended positive consequences from owning a house is that yes, you make about four to five percent on a nominal basis. After inflation, about one and a half to two percent. That's very, you know, that's a wonderful little return after inflation. But at the same time, you're not buying it. To, to retire on the money that that thing could grow. Um, I'm, I'm very, you know, just confused why people think that that is a retirement vehicle. One of the thoughts in that direction is perhaps people think they can own their home, they'll pay it off after 30 years, and then they can retire in that home. Do you think possibly that that might be a concept that monetarily could work for people? Well, in some cases, all of these are, are issues that people are talking about right now because we've had this incredible move up in the housing market since 2001 all the way through 2005 we basically had a hyper market people were getting very excited about the value of their homes but they didn't capture that value now we've had a bubble burst and all bubbles burst at some point in time and when they do we have some really unhappy people afterwards and that's what's suffering right now but people have paid off their homes uh, the values are down a couple of years from now we're going to start seeing those house uh, housing values go back up again uh, but again, it should never have been used as a retirement vehicle. You know, buying a home is kind of sold as part of the American dream, and renters are always told that, oh, you're throwing your money away. When are you going to buy? Is that not the case? Could renting possibly save you money in the long run? Well, I don't know if it could save you money. I mean, in some cases, it depends, again, when you buy. But here's, here's a general rule of thumb. Someone out there who's looking to buy a house, they should take whatever their income is, multiply times three or four, and whatever that number is, let's say you have a $50,000 income, you should be looking at buying about a $200,000 home. It should be three to four times. What happened during this hyper uh, market, it was literally people were buying 10 times what their uh, wages were. And that's just, it's not sustainable in any way, shape, or form. So those people People really need to take a hard look. If they don't like what they can get for $200,000, which you know, $200,000 buys you a lot of house, but if they don't like that, then they should look at what they can get for renting. Is one of, one of the concepts we see people are looking at here when they're looking to buy a home, like you mentioned, is something within their price range. And the idea is at, over time they're paying about the same amount, your rent doesn't go up. Is, is that possibly where the savings could come in? There, there could be some savings in that respect, but there's so many other factors, Molly, that you have to look at in terms of what someone is doing with their life, how they're spending their additional money, what their lifestyles are like. You have, I've seen a lot of people, especially uh, in, in right around where I live, I see a lot of people who drive beautiful cars, have boats, and they're renting. Um, it really depends on what kind of lifestyle that they want uh, to live. But uh, I've seen also people with uh, very expensive homes that don't have a lot of money uh, other than that house. Right. So it's a very personal thing uh, that people have to really wage. Right, that scary situation where people uh, become house poor, as they call it. Ed Butowski, thank you so much for joining yes. us. Great financial advice. We appreciate you coming on. Great. Thanks for having me again. The Coast Guard.